I want to tell you a story about a coat. This coat. But first, let me tell you about some friends of mine. We met online. This is Rod and Ben. They're teachers in southeastern Ontario. And they continued a conversation they were having one night over dinner with Zoe. After that, they got in touch with Tom. He jets back and forth between Montreal and Vancouver, bouncing between the Lester B. Pearson School Board and Simon Fraser University. My friends Alec and Dean are from Saskatchewan. And this is me, born in Montreal. I'm a Winnipegger now. One day, we all jumped in the water together with our clothes on. So, this coat belonged to a German prisoner of war, a non-combatant who, during World War II, was sent to Canada, and he worked in the little village of South River. And the reason that big red circle was on the back is because there were no prison cells, and there were no handcuffs or anything like that. The South River is kind of isolated. Uh, but if a prisoner tried to run away, then, well, that big red circle was a target, so that people could shoot them. When the war was over... There was a bookkeeper by the name of Mr. Anderson who had been working in the camp for years. And when one of the prisoners was repatriated back to Germany, he gave his coat to Mr. Anderson, who wore the coat when he would go deer hunting. And it was convenient for that, because the jacket was warm, and the big red circle on the back meant that people would know not to shoot him when he was out hunting. Isn't it interesting how the stories of some mundane objects which by themselves, without knowing the narrative behind them, are just that, mundane objects. But once you know the story, it takes on an entirely new meaning. So let me tell you the story about why we jumped in the water. We jumped in the water because of these people, a small sample of some of the most gifted, talented, passionate and caring educators anywhere in Canada. My friend Rob Fisher describes them as a group of people who care so much about education that it hurts. There were times together that we had that were just pure joy, uh, just enjoying the water, uh, moments to play together, sing together, hang out around a campfire and talk together. There were also moments of real pain. Some of the stories that they had to tell had Many of them had this in common, that there was a moment in the story where the knife turns. Teachers just sharing stories about a typical day in their classroom, a, st a story that a teacher anywhere might share. But there always seems to come a point in many of the stories where something happens that shouldn't have happened, that they were faced with an obstacle that they never should have had to overcome. And those were the hard moments. And what's perhaps even harder about it is it's probably true for everyone. Every teacher anywhere has probably had a similar experience. Anyways, we came together to write this book, and we worked really hard at it. We started working on it months in advance, each of us individually. But when we arrived at the Northern Edge in northeastern Ontario, we kind of got down and dirty, and really effectively we had a single day from early in the morning to about six, six o'clock at night. We worked solid, uh, nonstop, to finish this book. Each of us kind of had one part of a chapter. Uh, this is the excellent group of people that I had the pleasure to work with. We wrote the chapter called The Change We Need. I'm not going to tell you more about it other than you can find it in the book we wrote. I mean, some of the ingredients for success was awesome food, campfires, and an environment that fostered creativity and kind of looking at the world from a different angle. There was activities that we did where we came together, giving each other a little nudge. Uh, some people wrote about the nudge we need. I don't want to go into too much detail, but let me finish up by, I guess, summarizing the experience like this. By design, we started the entire experience by building on the personal relationships and connections that we already that already existed between all of us. And we ended by writing this book in a weekend about what most matters to us as teachers and as learners. It's really about our hopes and dreams for the future of education for our children and our country. And in a way, it's about that coat by itself 
drab and mundane, but when you know the narrative behind it, it sparkles, rich with the significance of that story. This book by itself may be just words on a page in black and white, but the narrative of its genesis adds something to its depth and maybe its significance. So, what does all this mean for you? Well, <laughs> read the book. But also, when you're planning to teach your next lesson, remember the importance of narrative because your students' memories are going to sparkle not with the stuff that you taught them, but the stories of the time that you spent together and the tales that you created together.